Hi everyone, my name is William Chang. Today, I wanted to bring you some fascinating stories about the interesting world of animals and their behaviors. Let's take a look at what we will be learning today. We'll first learn how to define behavior in a scientific concept. When you hear the word behavior, you might think of your best friend's demeanor or how you act under a certain situation. However, the scientific definition of behavior is wonderfully simple but wonderfully complex all at the same time. After we have defined behavior, we'll be moving on to some types of animal behaviors that are most prominent in the natural world. Let's dive into the central point of today's lecture. What is behavior? Behavior is the way in which an animal or person acts in response to a specific situation or stimulus. Some of you may be asking me, oh, what's a stimulus? A stimulus could be anything. The light right next to me, food on the table, or a predator chasing you. These are all situations and stimuli that animals employ behaviors to respond to. We know these two factors as nature and nurture. Why are nature and nurture so important? It's because these two factors are how behaviors are affected. The environment and genetics both play a big role in how animals and individuals act. How does the environment affect your behavior? Let's bring up this hypothetical situation. You and your twin sister are separated at birth. Your twin sister is given to an impoverished family while you are given to one of the wealthiest in all of your town. Do you think that after 20 years, when you two come together, do you think that you will have the same behavior? I highly doubt it. Genetics are also a big influencer because genetics decides what behavioral patterns are passed down from generation to generation within a species. A perfect example of this is one within humans. If you show a baby anything that looks like a face, even a circle with two dots in it, the baby will smile. That is a behavioral pattern that is embedded in our genetic code. Let's now look at some of the most prominent types of animal behaviors. Our first behavior, imprinting. Imprinting is a survival mechanism in all reality because it is especially prominent among baby birds. And what do many baby birds do when they first hatch? They look for their parents. The baby birds have to learn to recognize who is within and who is not within their species. This is why we say the first thing they see is their mother. If you are close by and the biological parents of the young birds are not, then the young birds will think that you are the parent. They will imprint on you and follow you for the majority of their lives and in the future mate, at least try to mate with humans. Imprinting is the mechanism in which baby birds learn to recognize animals who are within their species. And we also learned that imprinting can go wrong. One of the first questions you may be asking when I switch to this slide is, William, why is there a white blinding light on the right part of my screen? That's because this is habituation. Habituation is one of the most simple animal behaviors. Animals learn 
not to respond to unimportant repeated stimuli. For example, these bright flashes of white light. Habituation gives animals a chance at survival because animals will learn to not respond to these stimuli and instead focus on more important stimuli. More important stimuli may be food, water, and predators. Therefore, habituation can increase relative fitness. Let's see how well you habituate to this light. If you were successful, you'll find yourself listening to more of me talking than looking at this bright light. We once thought that this behavior was unique to only us, only humans. We were wrong. Problem solving is the innovative way of dealing with an unexpected issue. Let's take a look at the images at the right. You have the seagull dropping a clam repeatedly to try to break the clamshell. And a monkey using a rock as a hammer to break open a seed. The seagull dropping the clam was actually a picture that I took on a recent journey to the seaside. I saw firsthand this seagull using its problem-solving abilities to try to get to the clam meat. And this seagull was ultimately successful. Social behaviors are something we could easily write volumes upon, but we'll just be looking at the most common three social behaviors. The first is the courtship ritual. The courtship ritual is another way that animals of a species recognize that they are of the same species and whether or not they are fit to reproduce. For example, this picture of the common loons shows them doing a courtship ritual. In this manner, they will decide if they are part of the same species, which they are, and whether they are fit to reproduce. Agonistic behavior is what it sounds like. Agonistic behaviors enable animals to compete and to establish hierarchies. In this other picture on the right, you see the chicken pecking order. When putting a bunch of hens together, you will find that they immediately start pecking each other. This is to establish the pecking order, which is a hierarchy, a dominance hierarchy among the flock. And of course, competition. This may take the form of guarding territory or even competing for females or even males. And finally, altruistic behavior. Studies show that the closer linked two individuals are, the more likely that they will display such altruistic behaviors. So altruistic behaviors can include protecting one another from predators or telling their families that there is a food source nearby. Let's take a few moments to summarize what we've learned. We learned the definition of behavior, the way animals react to certain situations or stimuli. Then we learned about the two influences of behavior, environment and genetics. And finally, we went over some types of behavior. The similarities between us and all of the other animals is exemplified by the way we show our natural behaviors. We aren't so different from our animal compatriots after all. Thank you.